bless you. Bless you. Bless you, Sister Sandra. And thank you again for your consistency in the service. It is a great encouragement to know that there are brethren that take God's work seriously, that when they are asked to do anything for God, they don't do it as unto man, but they do it as unto God. And as Hebrews said, we are ministering to God in an earthly sanctuary, bless his name. And although we're ministering to God from the earth, bless God, our ministration, if it is done through Jesus Christ, it is received in heaven, bless the Lord. So whatever we do for God, it is not just an earthly service. Our service is also a spiritual service that is ministered in the heavens. So give God thanks for this another privilege that God has spared our lives, that we can be gathered together as sons of God, looking for, the scripture says, the blessed hope and appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are gathering. As the scripture says, we're gathering unto the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that when he comes, we would not be found wanting, but we would be found in a state of readiness so that when he appears, we would not be ashamed. Bless the Lord. So as we gather for our Bible study, I just want to acknowledge our senior ministers in our midst, acknowledging the ministry which is given for the perfecting of the saints, acknowledging our overseer, our elder Thompson, acknowledging our elder Grant, acknowledging our sister Shirley, our senior deacon Wallace, acknowledging all the ministry in the mighty name of Jesus, greeting also the saints, the mothers, the evangelists, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have not come together by chance. God has ordained this gathering and we are here by his will, by his goodness and by his mercy. And God wants to feed his sheep. Bless God. That was the command that God gave to Peter through Christ. Bless God, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Bless his name. And we give God thanks for the apostle Peter, that although he had slighted the call on of his life originally, we give God thanks that he had repented and given himself to that mission, which was to feed God's sheep and to feed God's lambs, bless the Lord. So we give God thanks for those ministers that God has ordained to feed us and to minister to us so that we can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we go into our Bible study, I'd just like to ask our mother Chitoli just to commit our knights minister into the hands of the Lord. I was greatly blessed by his ministration last week, looking at Luke 8, when the sower went forth to sow and the seed fell on good ground. We're trusting God tonight that as the sower sends that seed, bless God, it will fall on the good ground of our heart and bring forth fruit. In Jesus' name. So, Mother Chitoli, God bless you. Praise God. Blessed be God. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we do humbly approach your mercy seat in the name of your blessed Son, Jesus. We give you thanks and praise, O oh God, for this honor and privilege that one more time, Lord, we can come before you, O oh God, gathered together, Lord, even to acknowledge you and to learn more about you. We bless your name. 
We thank you, Father God, for keeping us throughout the day. Lord, some have gone out, oh God, to work. Some have had a very tiring day, but we thank you, Lord, that in your presence there is a fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We pray, dear God, for your refreshing, oh God, we pray, dear God, that you will renew their strength this evening, oh God. And Lord, as we come before your presence, Lord, we want to give you thanks because you've been good to us. Lord, you have been our help, oh God, in times of trouble, you you are right here with us and you promise that you won't leave us nor forsake us. This evening, God, we, we want to learn more about Jesus. Lord, not to depend upon ourselves, but to know, oh God, there is a savior who has given his life for us, who understands all about us. Lord, I pray this evening that God, we will be blessed, oh God, through your word. We pray that you would anoint us, dear God, your servant afresh this evening. Lord God, we pray that you would touch him right now, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. We pray, dear God, that you will grant him utterance as you would minister your word. We pray, dear God, that his word, oh God, we would hide it in our heart, even as the psalmist David declared, thy word have I hid in my heart that I would not sin against thee. Lord, we understand that uh, because, Lord, your word, Oh, God did not abide with, with Adam and Eve in the garden. Oh, God, they, they, oh God did not obey your command. And hence, oh, God, we were plunged into darkness. But, Lord, you are the light of the world. And you come to give us life and life more abundantly. And your word is spirit and your word is life. And we come this evening to receive more of this life-giving flow, as it were. The woman at the well, she understood, oh God, that the, the water that she needed, it was not in the well that that water, oh God, she would drink it, but she would be thirsty again. But Jesus Christ gave her living water. And we pray this evening, Lord, that we would receive this living water and that each and every one of us, Lord, this evening will go away feeling refreshed, renewed, strengthened, and, oh, God, that we'll continue in the way. We bless your name. We give you thanks. And we honor you. We pray, God, that you would give us a listening ear as we commit ourselves in Jesus' name and for the glory of God. Amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Mother Chitoli. Before we hand over to our Elder Thompson, I'd just like to ask for one more prayer from our sister Cynthia, praying for the church and the brethren in Jesus' name. Is Sister Cynthia available? Yes, I'm here, Brother Pat. I'm here. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Most righteous again, eternal Father, oh God. Another time, Lord, oh God, we do humbly come before you, Lord. We want to give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor for another day, Lord, for waking us up this morning, oh God. We want to thank you for the breath we breathe. Lord, thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us, oh God. Father in heaven, as you come, Oh, God, for another night, oh, God, Bible study, Lord, that you will continue to feed us with your word. Because you said in your word, oh, God, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth, Lord. Because we know that your word, their spirit and their life, Lord. I pray, oh, God, that your, your word will fall on good ground this night, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, strengthen us again, we pray another time. Give us a listen ears, Lord Jesus. Straighten out of the people, you know, all the different needs, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, as we come at everyone before you again this night, we come at the minister before you tonight, oh, God. 
Father Neville, just say, oh God, if a man minister, let the ministers and oracle of you, oh God. Bless you, people, oh God. Again, we pray, Father Heaven, as we look to you, Lord, and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Cynthia. And at this time, I'd just like to hand over to our speaker for this evening, Elder Thompson, in Jesus' name. Lord bless you, Brother Pat. Lord bless you, brethren. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Greetings overseer. Praise God and all the ministers. And importantly, the brethren who sit at the uh, banqueting table. We give God thanks for his mercies and his goodness towards us this day. He afforded us this privilege whereby we can live a life worthy of his expectations uh, without his strength and without his will and the hiding of his word in our hearts. We would not have been successful over, over sin, having victory over sin and being delivered from the various temptations. For this, I give God thanks that he has given us this day our daily bread and he has actually delivered us from the various temptations that has come our way. So I give him thanks for this opportunity whereby we can gather ourselves to hear the, the dropping of his word, um, having fellowship with him. It is basically um, now chooses has now become one of the cool of the days, praise God, where God will come down amongst our midst. And we have been blessed. Um, I was so I was tremendously blessed on Sunday, listening to our elder ministering the word of God, Amen. And um, it, it stayed with me. Um, yesterday I sat with overseer, and we had a good good conversation. Thank God that despite um, what's going on or what's happening or what has happened, we are still able to indict our souls in a good matter. Having this understanding within our hearts that we, although we weep and we moan, mourn, we understand that it is only but for a season. Um, a season. Jesus said of Lazarus, he is but sleeping, amen. He is but sleeping. So we give God thanks for the understanding that we have in our hearts, yes, we are missing our loved ones and everything like that. But uh, in our hearts, in the depth of our hearts, and the, the anchorage that anchors our soul is that if we ourselves, praise God, live according to the will of God, and those who die in the Lord, we will not prevent each other from meeting him in the air. Praise God. Because we all will be risen up together to meet Christ in the air. So, Let's continue praying one for the other and, um, you know, and enjoying other, each other's uh, presence and fellowship, having a good fellowship with the Lord. Amen. So I say it's a good thing, thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. I am going to continue where we left off, basically, from um, last 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 Thursday. And this Thursday, we want to um, concentrate on how we are actually listening and the benefits that we have derived from listening to Christ. We also need to have, uh, have an understanding that if Christ hadn't become a stumbling block to Israel, then we ourselves as a Gentile um, nation would not have heard the gospel, amen, as we're hearing it now. So all things work together for good. And when the adversary would mean it for evil, God has um, brought it out for good, amen. So I'm going to share my screen and bear with me, please, as I share my screen. Rocks were the pack to uh, read for me. Right. 
can you see my screen brother? Is my screen, can you see my screen brother? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, Lord bless you. We are basically going to just go over a few things that we, we touched on last week. And um, the important thing is that there, last week we looked on um, having confidence, praise God, and having a concentrated trust, praise God, and also commitment. Commitment, confidence, and a concentrated trust. The three C's. It is important that we exercise those three things every day in our lives. Regardless of what would turn up, there has to be a commitment. Praise God. There has to be a commitment. There has to be a um, confidence. And there has to be what I would call a concentrated trust, uh, a trust that is unbreakable you know we understand who god is we know who god is and the lesson has taken us so far that why we need to listen to christ because christ is the head of all things and he is the way the truth and the life so um we're just going to uh, continue from where we left off last week and now i'll start to continue to pray as we look into these um, scriptures these lessons. Uh, Brother Pat, take heed for me, please. Brother Pat? Oh, sorry, my mic. L Luke 8, 18. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. Now this is important to understand. If we fail to exercise that which is given to us, it will be taken away from us and be given to another. And this is basically what happens to the Jewish nation as it were, because prophecy has established, or prophecy would say to them, that they have eyes and they see not, they have ears and they hear not. And it's all because that which stood before them, the glory, their glory which stood before them, they did not acknowledge and they did not accept. So as we go along, we got to be careful how we take, um, listen to the word of God because we can see the workings of God. We can understand, see how God operates, but then, because of unbelief, we will not enter into his rest. Because unbelief um, can cause us not to accept that which is set before us. So um, Luke, in his writing, says, Take heed, therefore, or Jesus is saying, Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath, which he seemeth to have. Salvation came to the Jews first, and because they didn't accept the way God had brought it to them, it was taken away from them for, um, uh, 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 for a time because they will receive it again. But they, because they didn't accept Christ, it was taken from them and given to the Gentiles. The woman said um, the Gentiles would eat the crumbs that fall off the table. And Jesus says, it's not me to give children's meat to dogs. But the lady had faith. And this is how us Gentiles come into the fold. We came in by faith. Because we listened. Hearing ear, uh, well, Proverbs 2 1, Proverbs chapter 2 1, 2, and 5. My son, if thou wilt receive my words 
and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Amen. Now, there, there's a portion, I think it's in the same proverb, somewhere in, in, in a proverb. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And here Solomon is encouraging, praise God, those that would listen or give their ear over to the word of God. Because as you know, as we've been taught many a time, that as we travel, we must have the word of God beside us. So Solomon is saying to his son, my son, if thou wilt receive my words, or God is saying to us, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding, then shalt thou understand the fear of God, fear of the Lord, and find knowledge of God, find the knowledge of God. How we walk and how we worship and how we present ourselves to God is how much we allow or hide the word within our hearts. Because the, what hearing does, praise God, our listening does, it gives, it adds to the heart understanding. Out of the heart proceed the issues of life. The things that comes from the heart is the thing that defiles a man. You, you, you will see that in Mark 7, Jesus says, what comes out of the heart defiles a man. So as David would put it, if we hide the word in our hearts, God's word in our hearts, what the word will do is fight the nature or the carnal, carnal nature of man and bring out the spirituality, spirituality of the word. Because when you practice the word, you're actually practicing spirituality. When you practice the word, and hide it in your heart, you become God's friend. So the wisdom is to conquer the evil that is in my heart. I would have to hide God's word in my heart so that I, as I listen to his word and then apply the, 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 the word to my heart, which gives, the word gives my heart an understanding how to perform, how to behave, how to walk. Enoch walked with God because he understood God. He hid God's word in his heart. And Bible says he was not. Verse 5 of Proverbs 2 says, Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So in other words, to please God, you, what faith does is give us the knowledge of God in order for us to walk and to please him. Amen, that's what it is. And that's why we need to listen to the Lord at all times, hearing word, hearing ear. Now we're gonna go back to the parable of the sower. Amen, we we'll go back to the parable of the sower. And just, we're just gonna look over it and see what happens. Because the, 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 the topic that I have here is dull of hearing. In other words, we don't allow the word to perform in our lives. So we become dull of hearing. Hear ye, oh, sorry, very bad. <laughs> Hear ye, therefore, the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not. Then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Amen. Now Paul said this, How can they hear 
without the preacher. And how can the preacher preach unless he was sent? So straight away, we would now understand from that um, verse in Romans that Paul spoke about, is that the sower is the one who carries the word. Amen. And when he carries the word, he preaches the word. And as he sows, he walks along the, the, the path, the various pathways. And he sows the word and the word enters. It doesn't matter what we're, how it's, it's preached, but the, from, my, from the understanding of this verse, Every time the word is preached, it enters into the heart of the man. Regardless of how they don't, they pretend that they're not hearing. But the problem is this, that we're looking at here as Jesus um, speak, is that when one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Praise God. So the word is sown in his heart. It is important that as a minister ministers, he ministers with understanding. In other words, given on this, a clarity of the word that he's preaching. And as he gives clarity, it will be the one who hears it, whether to receive it. If he receives it, then he will be some sort of ground. In this case, he's a wayside hearer because he hears it, but he doesn't apply it to his heart. So he becomes a wayside hearer. When one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. So he's hearing God's word in the passing. He has not actually applied it because had he applied it to his heart, he would have understood it. Amen. So that's the wayside preacher, um, the hearer. Then there is the stony ground. And this is something is very prevalent in our churches today when we look at it. And when a man leaves church, there's a tendency to blame those in, those in the church for them leaving it. But look at what Jesus says that these people are. What a fact. Um, Luke they, 13. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring forth no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. With fruit with patience. Three grounds here. Three so three kinds of soil, as it were. You got the soil that's got the grown uh, rocks and stones. Amen. And then you have the soil that is cumbered with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life. And then you have the good ground that would keep, would hear the word and they've become honest and of good heart 
having heard the word, they keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. There's a lot of people who would come to church and they would rejoice in the preaching of the word or the hearing of the word. And they would receive the word, but because in their hearts, there is no, uh, what's the word I would like to use? It is, the heart is not tender. The heart is not tender because there's rocks and, and all sorts of stone is mingled in the heart. The heart is basically, is a rough heart. And although they would receive the word, there is no soil, no, no kind of soil for the, for the word to take root in it. And whilst it's in their heart, the, the, the word is easily uprooted when they fall into temptation. And when they fall into temptation, they fall away. And by this, I say that they, they would tend to blame those who are in church or the good soil who are in church and putting put in the word in practice. Hearing the word and not practicing is simply the, 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 the soil with the rocks because there's so much going on in their life. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word, yes, God has spoken with joy. Yes, God has spoken and we have to hear God's word. But they have no root because there's a lot of hindrances in their lives. Praise God. And, as, and these have no root, which for a while believe until the time of temptation they fall away. Amen. I am human. That's a common one of the common phrases. I'm you I'm but human and God God knows that I'm gonna fall. If you if you're taking the word you must apply it to the word and believe it and ex eradicate from your heart that which caused the word not to take root. Amen. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Hearing the word, you got people who can quote scriptures to you, praise God. But they're not giving up what they're, the, the word that they have received is choked, praise God, by the cares of life. Things happen in their lives and, you know, they said, oh, I can't serve God because of this. Jesus called a, a young man to follow him. And Jesus, Jesus um, and he told the Jesus, oh, my father is dead and I cannot come. Cares of life, praise God. Or um, I've got to look after my cattle, which is, praise God, or pleasures of life. I just got married. Those things are become a hindrance, becomes a struggle. The things that make us struggle in this life can also be the things that cause us not to bring forth fruit worthy of repentance, fruit worthy of perfection. Now, the third soil, but that on the good ground are they which in honest, in an, which in honest and good heart, having heard the word, decide to keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. They understand that they need to break up the fallow ground, the ground that's the ground needs to be broken up so that this word can take root and push root down and your soul becomes anchored. The anchorage, anchoring of the, uh, of the word of God in your soul. David said, that word of I hid in my heart that I might have sinned against thee. That, that those circumstances or those situations that will prevent you from worshiping or cause you not to want to worship, cause you not to want to have fellowship 
praise God, you don't have those kind of desires. You are honest with the word, with yourself. You know yourself, but you hide the word to keep you in touch with God. But on that, but that on the good ground are they which in honest, honest and good heart, having heard the word of God, keep it and bring forth fruit which with patience, fruit which yeah, it should be with patience. God bless you. Amen for that. Still on the point of dull of hearing. And the question is, why parables? Why parables? Why is it why that Jesus had to speak in parables? There's a big reason for this. And we understand and we heard so many times. The, the parable is a is a is a story, heavenly story with an earthly meaning. Earthly story with a heavenly meaning, which other way it, it, it is dull of hearing. And let's look at it. What um, what Jesus is saying about parables and why he had to use parables. And you find that it is very important that we are here because Jesus spoke in parables, or the Gentiles are here because he spoke in parables. Brother Pat, please. Matthew 13, 10 to 12. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Amen. Now, we have heard a lot of things about parables. But when you look at parables, when Jesus, things, what I found with Jesus as he, as he would teach, praise God, he would teach in line with scriptures. And his parables would be in line with scriptures, with, uh, with the prophecies that would, would have been prophesied aforetime. So as he preach or teach in parables, he's also got to give a clear understanding to the church, i.e. the disciples, so that they could understand what's happening. One of the greatest verses of, this, of the Bible is this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever would believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We have heard many a times that we've seen in the scriptures, praise God, reported in the scriptures, written in the scriptures, whereby salvation came to the Jews first, and right and so, that's absolutely correct. Amen. But there is a mystery, praise God, that the Jews are not able to see or understand. So they would, Jesus will speak to them in parables, praise God. And he would in turn, would clearly speak to the disciples or the church as about the mysteries of the Gentiles coming in to the fold. Jesus said this, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, meaning he's talking about the Gentile world and not just Abraham's seed, Israel. Now the disciples weren't too sure what was happening in another portion of scripture. Um, they, they didn't understand that Jesus said to them, are you also without understanding? So Jesus had to give clarity 
Because when a man is not of understanding or hasn't got the understanding of God's word, he is known to be dull of hearing. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not. One of the mysteries of the kingdom is you, the Gentile, us, the Gentile, coming into the kingdom. Amen? And that's why you will find that Jesus didn't just die for Israel, praise God, of Israel, but he died for the whole world. Hence, when he was presented to, 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 to Simeon, praise God. He, he, Simeon gave the declaration, the glory of thy people, Israel. Amen. Is that the that, that goes? And a light to lighten the Gentiles. And the light to lighten the Gentiles. So the parable is to shed darkness or to show the darkness that is on Israel, praise God, and also show the light that is now coming onto the Gentiles. In other words, because the church opens its hands, its, its doors now to both the Jews and the Gentiles. Amen, and the middle wall of partition is, 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 um, is broken down. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that which he hath. So salvation, as it were, in a measure for a time for just a season is taken away from the Jews because blindness is now imparted. We'll see that later um, onto them in order for us to become uh, the people that see sat in darkness have seen a great light. For whosoever hath to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance but whosoever hath not from him shall it be taken away. Brother Pat, could you read for me the next slide, please? And then we kind of clear up the understanding. Verse 13 of Matthew 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. So what we're looking at in this parable, and when we talk about dull of hearing, Dull of hearing establishes the lack of understanding. When a man understands things, something, he operates in it and he does it well. Praise God. Now, because the understanding is taken away from, and it is a deliberate ploy from God, in the plan of God, in order to take from Israel, or in order for the Gentile to receive, praise God, the salvation that Simeon spoke about, to so receive the salvation from the bread that, uh, from the crumbs that fell off the children's table. So you notice that the, 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 the parable is in line, bless his name, is in line with the prophecy of Isaiah. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. Seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. 
when we listen to Jesus, and that's why God said to Moses and Elias in the in Mount of Transfiguration and Peter, Paul, and James, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear me him because Jesus has the solution. Jesus in Jesus is redemption. He is redeeming both the Jew and the Gentile by one sacrifice. Amen. And if they believe, now his performance, and we see that later on, his performance of, of God's word and of the law became a stumbling block to Israel. Amen. Because here is a man who's not according to to, 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 to the law. He's not a priest, praise God. He's not a, a Levite, praise God, but he's preaching God's word and he's doing and he's doing miracles. The deaf hear and the dumb are speaking. And by what power does he do these things? Some are so blind that he says he's he's related to Beelzebub. But it has it is because the understanding of God's word is taken away from them. Now, it's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous place to be when you hear God's word and there is no under, understanding given. And that's why preachers, uh, teachers, and ministers must, when they stand up, they must give clarity of God's word so that those that would hear would become good grounds and apply it to their heart and put put the word in their heart that they won't sin against God and that they would walk worthy of the vocation unto which they are called. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. We you hear God's word and you, you can't understand it, that, 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 that's, that's a hardness of heart. You know, it, 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 it's hardness of their heart and partially because blindness is placed in them. We hear, hear the word, praise God, and we've applied it to our hearts. Hence, we are in a meeting like this, giving God thanks for speaking to us in these last days and has given us the privilege that we can take the word because and, and place in our hearts and understand that we should not perform sin before God. Amen. That is that is a, a wonderful blessing that we have received. But that uh, you see in, in in the next week or so, that that that's that's um that's not only for a time being because God would have to revert back and enlighten the eyes. Praise God of the Jews in order for them to receive salvation through Christ. Amen. Because that's the only way they're going to get salvation. <coughs> bless his name. Amen. Let me see. Yeah. Well, bless you. Brother Pat, still done bell of hearing and the reasoning why parables are spoken of. This particular parable was spoken. Amen. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Amen. The senses, there are five senses, amen, that uh, someone got the door. Sorry. So, sorry, um, Reggie. For there are five senses feeling, seeing, hearing, amen, and because we go by senses or we operate by senses in our carnal selves, we find that it is important that 
the two important or the three important things that we go by. I ask that you pray from the grave and you're distracting me. There's a distraction here. Praise God. Just a minute, Brethren, please. Brother Pat, could you read that for me, please? Get that thought again. Verse 15. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Amen. Amen. Now, what is this saying to us is that the thing, how we come against salvation is by seeing and hearing, praise God, and applying understanding to our hearts. When we do that, praise God, we, God has no choice but to heal you. If you are hearing and you're seeing, and then by hearing and seeing you should be converted, then God is going to heal you because what you have done, you like the good ground, praise God, that has taken the word and you're now keeping it. So when you keep the word, God has no choice but to see, but to save your soul. For these people's heart is wax broke. In other words, they're dark. It's darkness in the heart wickedness in our heart. and their ears are dull of hearing they're not they're hearing but they're not hearing as it were and their eyes are closed jesus is standing in front of them preaching about the eternal kingdom or the kingdom of god and they're not seeing praise god the glory of god they're not seeing that god is with them praise god they're not seeing that emmanuel is with them it is hidden from them because of the grossness of their heart, the darkness of their heart. They have not turned themselves over to God. And their eyes, story, best at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. You do the things of God because your heart have an understanding. You understand who God is. You have found knowledge. Praise God. You have understood that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And because you have that understanding, you become converted. You no longer dwell in carnality, but you now dwell in, in spirituality. Spirituality becomes a natural thing to you. And because it becomes natural to you, God would heal you and cause you to walk righteously. That's what happened to, to Enoch. Amen. Where carnality was turned into spirituality naturally. He did spiritual things naturally. He walked with God. Obtaining salvation by faith. Um, Brother Pat, please. Sorry, brethren, for the distraction. There's a there's Roman. a workman come, sorry, Brother Pat. So a Roman. workman come this late of the night looking at something that we report. And he come in at nine o'clock. You know, I don't know how they work. You want to pray for me? Praise God. Okay, okay Brother Pat. Bless you. What should we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel which followed after the law of righteousness, not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. 
for they stumbled at that stumbling block, stumbling stone. Amen. What's standing before Israel? Israel took the law, praise God, and they worked according to the, they thought the righteousness that they would practice or they turned it into the tradition, some of it into the traditions of the fathers and they worked by it and they thought that they would be righteous. The law is righteous. So they thought if they practice righteousness, the law, that it would be their salvation. Us, the Gentiles, praise God, we practice righteousness because it comes by faith. We, we are told that with the preachers that preach to us is that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we understand, we have the understanding now that if we work by faith or work the righteousness of God by faith, then we'll be able to please God because we've taken the word and placed it in our hearts. And even at this very moment, we sit and we listen to the word of God and we will place it in our hearts that if God permits tomorrow morning and we hear the word, those things that we need to correct, we will correct it and we walk according to the will of God. We do this by faith, by faith. Being justified by faith, we have, we are, we, we are able to please God because we, got, we are justified by faith. Israel didn't do that, didn't exercise faith. They thought that if they practiced the law, one, one time they accused Jesus for allowing their apostles to eat corn without washing their hands. Praise God. But Israel, which, but, but here in Romans 9 31 says, But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. And the reason why, because they have not mixed it, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. So they thought if they do the works of the law, that they will be saved. But Jesus is saying they need to exercise faith. And Jesus became the stumbling stone in front of them because they accused Jesus of various things, not practicing the law. So the stumbling, that's why they didn't obtain, those who didn't believe didn't obtain salvation. Only those who believe that faith, Jesus would often say that faith has made thee whole. Right, that. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone, which is Christ, as it is written. Oh, brother, sorry. <laughs> as it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believe it on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. So we are privileged. We are in the privileged time. We are privileged to be hearing Jesus speak, but God in the, in, in, in the last days spoke to us by his son. And because we seeing the light of his work and the light of his word, we're able to grasp the hold of Christ. The, I think it's in Isaiah somewhere, I'm paraphrasing, where the Gentiles rejoice to see, praise God, the Messiah, and believe on him, praise God, but the, 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 but the Messiah became, or Jesus became the stumbling stone or the rock of offense. And that's why they would seek to crucify him because they didn't believe that Jesus was working or some of them didn't believe or the hierarchy of the Jewish, of Judaism didn't believe that Jesus was working in line with the scriptures. Amen. So Jesus became a stumbling block. Now here's an example 
of what Jesus did in Mark 7. When you've got time, you can read the whole chapter of Mark 7, because it tells you also that out of the heart proceeded the, the various wickedness or evils of mankind. It's not what you eat the fire, but what comes out of the heart that defiles you. But here's something that Jesus did and how important for us, and this is an understanding, how important it is for us to hear and listen to Christ in order to have the understanding how to walk right in this last days, in these present times. Here's an example of what Jesus used with this man. Mark 7, verse 32. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. Let me go. Yes, carry on. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. And he looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephatha. Sorry. Being opened. And straightway his ears were open and the string of his tongue was loose and spake plain. Amen. You see how important it is for us to listen to Christ, <coughs> how important it is for us to maintain that attitude of worship where we would listen to Christ in order to make heaven our home. If we don't listen to him, we will not find knowledge of God. If we don't listen to him, we're not going to be able to walk worthy of the vocation where to which we are called. This man, there was two things wrong with this man. Praise God. He was deaf and he was dumb. He couldn't hear the word. Praise God. And he couldn't speak in order to testify of the goodness of God. He did. So, and this is how we are before we came to Christ. We were both deaf because we didn't give air to the word of God. And we didn't have very much anything good to say about Christ. Amen. Until Christ came into our lives, put his finger in our ears in order for us to hear. Because remember, when we hear, our hearts get understanding. And by the understanding, we walk with God. By the understanding, we speak with God. By the understanding, we see who God is. <laughs> Amen. And he took him aside from the multitude. Praise God. Every believer must have a personal experience with Christ. You cannot have a believer, uh, cannot be a believer, and it's dependent on my own experience. For the fact you have an experience with Christ, that's why you're still with Christ. I have an experience with Christ. Every member here has a personal relationship. Overseas used to sing a song, me and Jesus got our own things going. It is imperative, it is important for you to have your, your personal relationship. Let Jesus put his fingers in your ears. Let him spit and spit and cause your tongue to speak things that is profitable. Amen. And he looked up to heaven, he sighed, and saith unto him, Ephatha, that is, be open. 
when the seed of the sower touches your heart, it opens your heart. The good ground, the good ground is open up. And when it's open up, the word can take root in your heart, praise God, and cause you to have a desire to keep it. Look on the amount of victory, just, just today alone. Just today alone, think of today. Look yeah. on the amount of victories you had, you know, this day. If you look back, you would raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to overcome. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for not being in a situation where I could fight and refuse to fight. Thank you, Jesus, where I could actually say something that would cause hurt to somebody. That's a victory in itself. That's a victory in itself. Praise God. And straightway, when you meet Christ, there is an immediate reaction to meeting Jesus. And straightway, his ears were open because you have to hear what Jesus is saying to you. Praise God. And you have to confess what Jesus has done. And then you speak plainly, said, I once was lost, but now I'm saved. I met the Lord. Praise God. And straightway, his ears were open and the string of his tongue was loose and spake plain, obtaining salvation by faith. Verse 37 of the same chapter. The people were actually astonished at what he did because they, they brought this man and they didn't, they didn't expect what Christ was going to do, what they were hoping for some reason. Amen. And when they saw what Christ has done to this man, they realized he is the one to listen to. He is the one who, praise God, who, who, who should not be a stumbling block to them, but he should be the glory. The Gentile recognize you at this time, in this minute, recognize that Jesus is your salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall be, I be afraid? The Lord is the strength of my life. Oh, praise God. And, and that's what you say, because the light is on me open to you, the word is open to you, it's not hidden to you because it's plainly people that sat in darkness are seen in light. It's closing, this is a closing slide, but please could you read this last verse in Mark 7 and in Romans 10, 10. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, he hath done all things well, he make it both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. The Lord bless you, saints. Remember that what Christ has done for you, he has done it well. Praise God. You are, he is the author and the finisher of your faith. You have received a faith that is perfect. He's the captain of the soul. Amen. He's the shepherd and the bishop of the soul. And what he has done for you, he has done it well. He has given you the strength to overcome the various controversies and the various situations that will come your way. He has given you the strength to overcome. Be an overcomer. Praise God. Praise God. If you be an overcomer, you will understand that Christ overcome the world. And were beyond measure astonished. They were so astonished, people, Israel, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And Paul picked it up in Romans 10. Thing says, For with the heart, Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. May the Lord bless you tonight. May he cause his face to continue to shine upon you. 
praise God and continue praying one for the other. Let us remember we are privileged in these last days to be hearing, oh God, and, and being blessed by Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. God bless you, Sister Sandra, in Jesus' name. God bless you, Brother Levi. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Thank you so much for the <laughs> able way. Praise God. Say God bless you, Brother Leroy. Bless you, Brother Leroy. Bless you. Thank you so much for the able way in which you taught, even amidst, you know, the disruptions. God bless you. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. <laughs> Nine o'clock. Oh, God. It's supposed to come from five o'clock. I'm fine. Oh well, that's the well, hopefully you got a bit of the word and you'll be leaving with something that'll touch his soul. So whatever is fixing, we fixed him. Praise God. Yeah, Praise yeah. the Lord, brethren. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Brother Leroy. Looking forward to I think your last week is next week, is it? I think so. Yeah. 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 God, bless so. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, before I ask for the closing prayer, which I will be asking um, Sister Pam to pray, I'm going to ask Sister Charmaine to get ready if you've got the announcements. Um, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. And Sunday, our service starts at 1.30 onwards. Our topic for this week is Our Saviour Has Come. And our scripture readings are taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 20, um, Matthew 2, verse 1 to 12. Also, uh, just a reminder, our carol service will be on Sunday, the 18th this month. Finally, just a reminder that our mother Edward's funeral will be on the 9th of the 1st. God bless you all. God bless you, Sister Shah. Thank you so much. Overseer will be doing a duet with the Martin with uh, Martin at the soup kitchen. He's already sent me a message to remind me that my daddy should be there for twelve. And if you can, is it this Sunday? It's this Sunday, the eighteenth. <coughs> oh, yeah, this Sunday, the eighteenth. Okay. Um, it might be an idea to bring sandwiches or a packed lunch so we don't have to go and come back. Um, I'll still be doing the tea. Is it in the we're... afternoon or in the morning? It's in the afternoon. It's at seven. Is it from seven to eight? Charmaine, I think it's from seven to eight. Seven, yes. Yeah, seven carol services from seven to eight. Okay. Oh, uh, once we hey, finish that. Is he going to play his trumpet? Sorry, I don't, I don't know if he's going to play his trumpet. I don't know. I'll be sending <laughs> I'll be sending out the invitations for my mum's um, service on the 2nd. I'll send that out this evening, brethren. God bless you. Keep praying one for another, brethren. Keep vigilant. Praise God and keep being an example following so that others will follow you as you follow Christ. God bless you. Sister Pam, bless you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. If it had not been the Lord on our side, if it had not been the Lord on our side, when men rose up against us, when they'd swallowed us up quick, and when their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us and the stream had gone over our soul. And the proud waters had gone over our souls. Blessed be the Lord who have given us as a prey. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your love and your mercy towards us. We thank you that you have been on our side. We thank you for the washing of the water by your word. We thank you for ears that we can hear deeper than the surface. We thank you for opening the eyes of our understanding. We understand, oh God, through your divine spirit, who is the spirit of truth guiding us, God, that we can understand the quest, the life that you've placed within us. 
We ask you as we're about to depart off of this platform, one from the other, that we'll continue to listen to your voice. And Lord, we won't follow a stranger's voice, but we'd hear and not only hear, but heed the instructions that you give us daily. Oh God, we hear one of your children who would say morning by morning, new mercies we see. Oh, we've needed your hands that provided great is your faithfulness, Lord, to us. We ask you to cover us by your divine spirit, Lord, and comfort our hearts. Remember, over St. Edwards, oh God, and us who bemoan our mother. God, we pray that you would comfort us. Friend of the friendless, helper of the helpless, God, continue to abide with us. And those of us who are still sore with pain from the loss of our loved ones, God, comforter, great comforter, King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, we pray that you'd continue to hover over us, be a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Help us to be acknowledging you in all our ways that you will continue to direct our path because sometimes we see darkly. Sometimes we become confused and perplexed because life overwhelms us. But God, you said we should cast all our cares upon you for you care for us. And you told us to take your yoke upon us and learn of you for your yoke is easy and your burdens are light. Thank you for your word. Thank you for not breaking your promise, God. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for opening doors. Thank you for answering prayers. Thank you for your healing power in our lives. Thank you for salvation. Thank you that we have a hope that doesn't make us ashamed. Thank you, oh God. And we ask you that as we go through the next few phases of our lives and the next few days of our lives, Lord, that you'd continue as we commit our way to you. Go with us, oh God. For thine is the kingdom. The earth is yours, the fullness thereof, the breath that we breathe within our nostrils, you've allowed us. The power and the glory belongs to you, oh God. All honour, all glory and all praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you, amen. Brother Leroy, God. for teaching, praise God, and hosting. Brother Patrick for supporting the teacher and opening our Bible study. Sister Cynthia for your prayer. Mother Dolly for your opening prayer. Sister Pamela for your closing prayer. Sister Charmaine for your announcements. Please keep overseer in your prayers. He's been trying to get on. He's been on and off of this system today, of this platform today. Um, and it, today he's been so cold and so cute. I've run in and seen him. He's, oh, he's such a soldier, brethren. Keep him in your prayers. Pray one for another, brethren, as we go forward, knowing that we're all going through something right now. Walk safely and with your eyes open, both in your salvation and on the roads, which are both very slippery, very cold, very precarious. <laughs> we love you. Let's keep praying for one another. Let's pronounce our benedictions together. God bless you, brethren. Let the word of your mouth Out. and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable yeah. in thy sight. Oh, oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. God bless you, brethren. God bless you and good night. Amen. Good night. Monday. Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Remember, Good night. keep praying for one, one another and forgiving one another. Oh, my God, he's there. Yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> forgiveness is no good. Give God one bless. another. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Hallelujah. Forgive Amen. us, you want to be forgiven. Oh. Amen. Oh. Bless oh. you, bless you, bless Jesus. you. God bless you, overseer. God bless you. I hope he's not far away, you know. God bless you. Good night, brethren. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Five, four, three, two, one.